Hello dear friends, today we are painting seashells. Uh, because we are living in Bordeaux in France, uh, the city is very close to the Atlantic Ocean, it's about one hour away and it's very common for French to just go for a little vacation over the weekend to, to the beach and that's uh, what we did where I gathered all these beautiful seashells and I think this is very interesting and uh, uh, challenging <laughs> topic to paint in watercolor. Before we start, I would like to uh, discuss uh, all the different types of shells that exist and I kind of got carried away and <laughs> decided to make a whole um, map <laughs> of different shells uh, and specifically uh, separating uh, shells from Atlantic Ocean here on the left page and the rest of the shells that you can find somewhere else here on the right page. And the one that I found are very particular. For example, this one, the bay scallop, is very interesting because of the uh, ribs uh, on the shell that I think will be exciting to paint in watercolor. There's a cockle shell, which is uh, very common for the beach. You can see really a lot of those guys everywhere in the sand, uh, different size, like this one is way bigger. And here you have a giant shell which is, uh, I believe it's called surf clam <laughs> and it's a really giant surf clam compared to this one for example. Uh, this one is more commonly uh, found uh, on the beach. Also I think uh, this one is very curious. Uh, according to the <laughs> research that I did, it's called a dingle shell. I have it over here or maybe mother of the pearl. So if you guys know the correct name for these guys, <laughs> comment in the uh, description to this uh, tutorial because I'm not sure if these three are actually the same, if all of them are jungle shells or not. So if you know, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> uh, and particularly interesting shells to my opinion are these guys. Uh, they are gastropod shells, which means that they are only they consist of only one shell as opposed to for example this one all the mollusk that have two shells so they can close and open these guys they exist just like that uh, in one piece <laughs> and they are very interesting to draw and paint as well because all of the because of all the texture uh, on the shell that can be pretty challenging to paint with watercolor and there are a whole bunch of other shells that I didn't find <laughs> on the beach uh, of the Atlantic Ocean but they do exist in um, other places. For this tutorial I decided to paint the Serith shell uh, even though I'm very intrigued by <laughs> this scallop because of the um, shape and color. I think uh, the serif is offering us um, a bit more of a challenge in terms of watercolor painting because of the special texture of the shell. So I would like to try this one. I will submit um, offer <laughs> a few pictures of different shells that I have over here for you so you can use different um, shells. You can choose a different shell to paint if you want to. Uh, it will be, all of the pictures will be available in the Patreon, uh, in our Patreon channel, as well as um, the outline of this particular shell that I'm going to paint today. So you can just download it, print it and paint on it <laughs> uh, if you prefer. I would need to make the sketch slightly lighter because my shell is pretty light. So pencil line looks to me a bit too dark. The color palette here will be pretty limited. I will work with very light tones and I would like to start with wet on wet technique. I use cotton paper. It's Vinzen and Newton, 100% cotton. So it absorbs water and keeps uh, the uh, liquid the humidity inside its layer layers for a long time um, so it allows us to work on our uh, 
layers again uh, on our mixes cover mixes for a longer time without having sharp edges so the color palette i'd like to choose would be something very soft and subtle like um for example raw sienna very nice um light brown color together with some bits of yellow cadmium yellow so it's pretty sunny and light and here and there i'll introduce bits of pink i have coral pink over here so i'll start with the first underpainting very light very very light translucent layer of raw sienna mixed with uh, yellow bits of yellow Right away, I can introduce some drops of pink, my coral. I don't necessarily see pink <laughs> in my shell, uh, but I think that using it as underpainting so our very first light layer will give us a very nice subtone to the shell because after it will get dry it's gonna look way way lighter the watercolor will kind of lose its um saturation uh, and the pink will not be so noticeable but we will still feel the presence of this very soft pink tones so I think that's that's good and raw sienna with tiny bit of uh, blue in my case ultramarine blue um, I will get the shadow side on the right and I think that um, burn sienna mixed with blue is gonna work a bit better but I need to be careful to not overdo it, to not make it too dark. Now with the dot-like moves, I am dropping some of the texture of my shell. And because my layers are wet you don't really see the dot because the dot is kind of spreading everywhere on, <laughs> on the paper um, but this is what I want to achieve at this moment because later on when I will work in a layering technique adding fresh layer on top of the dried uh, shell I will have more specific shapes painted with my watercolors Inside the shell, the aperture, this part, it has a bit darker tone. So I will mix it by myself using burnt sienna with ultramarine blue and achieve a bit darker tone. However, I need to be sure that it doesn't leak into my main shell, into the, into the body of the spiral. <laughs> So here 
the edge of the spiral, I want to keep it light. So I'm using lifting technique, which is basically almost dry brush in my hand. And I'm lifting the pigment with the brush, revealing the whiteness of the paper underneath. And again, with a slightly darker tone of uh, brown. I'm introducing the shadow on the right side of the shell. Now the shell is not perfectly smooth, it has some sort of, um, well it's called ribs, <laughs> so the um, outline doesn't look like a straight line, it has little peaks in there. And one more time, I'll clear this side from the pigment. And actually, maybe I'll also clean a little bit along the shell to make it um, look a bit more shiny, like if the light is dropping from the left side. Now I need to wait for the shell to be dry so I can work on top of the dried pigment um, to create the textures. Cotton paper absorbs pigment slowly and pigment has the time to sink in and create soft transitions between each other, which is great when you are working in uh, um, <laughs> when you want to achieve softer connections without sharp edges. And I think this is also a perfect time to add some of the textures if you want those texture to be smooth without um, standing out too much and without being too sharp. Like here, it looks sharp because the paper is fully dry. But for example, here, the paper is not completely dry yet, so it's going to slowly absorb the pigment and leave us with a soft lines and edges. If not, you can always correct it using a wet brush or semi-wet brush. and achieve the consistency of the paint that you need. So my paper is more dry than, than wet, <laughs> which means I need a little bit more water on my brush. And I am doing it now. I'm mixing a bit more watery mix on my brush and creating the texture.
the only line on this shell that stands out is the suture line the one that connects the <laughs> kind of like wall valves the parts of the spiral here here and here so there's like three or four parts in the spiral and the line that stands out the most and it's pretty sharp the one that we don't need to um, dilute with water is the suture line this one all the other lines um, they should be a bit softer a bit uh, less uh, visible so they don't um, stand out too much Here is another suture line. It should be very thin and delicate, so make sure that your brush has a nice pointy end and it doesn't leave thick strokes. And I feel like I could even apply a bit of uh, clean water first before I start creating the ribs of my <laughs> shell uh, because I want those ribs to be um, a bit softer and less noticeable so they kind of blend in into the overall <laughs> landscape of the shell And over here I just want to make this separation between uh, the body of the spiral and the aperture a bit more specific, a bit more um, like separated. <laughs> this line should be a bit more clear. But immediately I dilute it with water so it smoothly connects with the rest just like so all right so if you feel like you need to place some accents go for it if you feel like it's going to be too much. Do not overwork it. Keep it nice and light and watercolor. -y. And the final part here would be to uh, paint the cut shadow. Because our shell is not flying in the air. <laughs> it's lying down on the table. So we need to create some shadows that is naturally casting on the table. Oops, moved my model. I want to show that um, this um, shell is kind of you know, it has sharp um, sides, the ribs. And because they're sharp, they are a bit darker. They have more shadow. Oh, 
Okay, cut shadow. I'll take clean water first, so it's going to be wet and wet technique. And I'm placing the water right under the shell. And the color of the shadow will be a mix of blue and burnt sienna. It's bits of uh, coral, my pink, why not? The reflection of um, the shell should be in a shadow too. It is also a good opportunity to create this sharp um, back of the shell, so this sharp uh, edges of the shell using um, um, negative space technique. So we are painting the cast shadow, which naturally outlines the actual shape of the shell. And I just want to make my shadow a bit uh, smaller. So with the wet brush, I am removing the pigment from paper. And here we go. We have our seashell, <laughs> serif seashell, um, painted in watercolor today. And as I said before, I will offer you uh, different photographs, different uh, pictures of uh, some of the shells. So you can pick the one that you prefer if you don't want to paint this one. And uh, you can use it for your own reference, or you can use the um, outline, the sketch, uh, of this particular shell that uh, I will attach in our Patreon channel. Excited to see your paintings and see you in the next tutorial.